Hey folks, I thought I would show you the script that we were working on last Sunday. If you recall, we were having problems with running it because when we would run the command, we would get all kinds of funny errors, kind of like this one. And some of us were getting the same error, and we felt that that might be the reason that we were all doing the same thing. Thing is, we were making typing mistakes, and I can show you because I have a copy of the original script that we can test. So if we type um, Python quick start dash good, this is what it should do. See how it has that name that we got? Well, yours should have a different name, but anyway, we click on allow. Oh, here, I'll show you what it's going to do. There's a file here in your home doc credentials. It's going to say allow. And I'll save this authentication cookie. So the authentication cookie works. Okay. Now, in case you're wondering, um, let's go ahead. I will show you what the real problem was. Now, I'm not going to show you everything because there's no point in showing you because my mistakes are different than yours. <coughs> but this program, you can download it. It's called Diffuse. Anyway, um, when you have the correct file, this is very useful to help you find where your mistakes are. Um, so anyway, notice here. I have no, I have the P and the O backwards. That's how it highlights them. Here, I have four W's, okay? And everywhere you see a red line, there's a mistake. So there are a lot of them. So, just to show you that I'm not going to take the easy way out, and neither should you. Let's go get back and start from scratch. First of all, let's get rid of this authentication token so that we can make sure that everything works. Let's get back here. Let's go to our home directory, cd tilde, and let's type um, in um, quick start to that pie on number. Okay, and let's begin. Okay. So, right off the bat, we import print functions from future. That's for uh, Python 3 compatibility. And we import the Google authentication tools. Uh, tools, and then storage. And if there are any parameters, we need to parse them. So we're gonna import art parse. And if there are, we run this little command that tells us if there are any um, extra numbers or things like that. And if there isn't, eh, just leave it alone. So, don't forget to type my comments here. Well, they're not mine, actually, they're Google's, but you know what I mean. This is where the credentials are stored. If you ever need to delete them, that's where I showed you just a few seconds ago, too. We're going to define the variable scopes. This is like the permissions, uh, or actually the location. The secret file, that's just the name of the file. And the application name. Every application needs a name. So, start. Now we're going to define our credential program, or our credential section, which is going to get uh, valid user credentials. And if it doesn't find anything, then it's going to launch the browser. going to come back with the credentials. So, in this function we're going to define the home directory as the tilde, as the typical home directory, and the credential directory is just going to be the home directory plus credentials. That's a folder there. And if there is no path there, so if there's nothing there, then make a folder. And the path is, of course, the path of the credential directory plus the name sheets.googleappies.com python quickstart.json. Now let's define our store variable, which is storage of the credential path. Let's define our credentials variable. 
And if there are no credentials around, or they're invalid, then we're going to define flow as our flow as our uh, client um, information. And our user agent is just going to be the name of the browser, or actually the, the application name, which is what we called um, it before. Okay. And if there are flags, in other words, extra arguments, we will add those flags to our argument. But if we don't have any, we'll just create a variable that is without flags. And then we print what we found. And finally, we return with the credential. Now we define our main function. And this one's just going to create an object that's going to connect with one of those uh, sheets or Excel files and it's going to download some information off of it. Just a couple of names and majors. Ugh. Yeah, this this is no fun to type. Ugh. But okay, almost done. Slash at it. And our, let's define our credentials variable. This one's different than the other one since it's a different function. Our HDB variable, we're going to call it credentials. It's our authorized credentials. And then our discovery URL, where we go find. Discovery best. And we want version 4. And then our service will be the discovery build that's going to be sheets version 4 and that's going to be the discovery URL the one that we just typed in line 61 okay and our spreadsheet identification that's that big nasty number that I typed up there okay. I know I should just do a yank and pull or, you know, the Vim version of copy-paste. But I'm a sucker for punishment. There. Now the range, this is the range of the cells. If you know Excel, you know that you've got little ranges there. And the result, we're going to grab those values from the range. And if there are no values, then we're going to go ahead and Let's define our values. Okay. Now, like I said, if we have no values, then we're going to say nothing there. Otherwise, we print name and major. And then we print the list. And normally, when we want to print a space holder, um, we include a percent s. The first percent s is the name, the second percent s is the major. And here's our ring. Okay, with name, and then we're going to define our main variable, or our main function, and there we go. We should now see the file here. <coughs> now, if you missed how we authenticate, we can go and do it again. Let's go to the API console and see where it says register your application. If you click on create a project, I've already created a bunch, but I'll create a new one. Click on create, click continue. And here, we click on the cancel button. Here, where it says pull off consent, click that. And 
in the product name. I'm going to call this um, screen cap test. So you'll notice is the screen capture that I did. Click save. <laughs> Make sure that we're on the credentials tab. We click on create credentials. You notice where it says OAuth client ID. Click that. Under application, we select other. And for the name here, we'll call this um, tests OAuth. about what we really care about is over here. Everything here is telling us what we need, but we want to download it. So we click on download. Okay. Click save. Let's go find where it's at. There it is. And we rename it so that it only has the name client secret JSON. There we go. We already have one here, but let's get rid of it just so you'll see it. Okay, move this over here. There we are, so we have the two files we need. We have that one and this one. Now let's go back to our terminal. Okay, and in our terminal, now we just type Python Wake Start 2. And we've got an error all day. Okay. <clears throat> so we needed an indented block. error is 82 by the way is just the module that launches it so ignore that one let's look at the next line 69 execute it could be that was 69 or 68 so let's go check it out Sixty-eight and sixty-nine are one line, so let's go ahead and see. It doesn't look like the error is there, so the very other place that it's very likely my error is is in this big fat long code. And I know I tried not to copy paste it, so let's uh, go over it. Okay, so. This is where the error is. And that was really hard to figure, but because most of the time, look at this. That 740, that's not a zero. That's a capital O. So we have to put a capital O. Let's go up there and fix the other one. This is a comment, but may as well fix it just so that we know. Okay, that's capital O. Let's exit out. Right quit. Now, let's go ahead and check and see if it works. So there's our quick start to Python, run it. And there it is. 
It took a little while and it made me nervous, but as you can tell, our code is running. Okay, so the point here is, of course, yeah, you've got to just like go over that code with a fine tooth comb and make sure. And if you do, though, everything should work. You should get that name. Once you do, we'll move on to the next stage of uh, connecting with the Google Sheet so that we can update our databases. Okay, if you got any questions, let me know. But remember, if you get errors, it's probably on your end. Okay, take care.